this is the 4th of August 2015. Down. We're at Vincent Corporation in Tampa, Florida. Uh, we're going to look run a test that's going to look hor really horrible. I've got to get on an airplane tomorrow and uh, this is uh, cuttings from frac drilling from uh, Clearwater in uh, Colorado. We're going to put uh, this thing for Daniel Gilbert. We're going to try squeezing oil out of that in this little screw press. It is, uh, somebody was running uh, paper mill sludge very recently. It hadn't been cleaned out since then, but since our sample is relatively small, uh, we're counting on the paper mill sludge to be sort of a primer so the press will get started. Go ahead, turn it on. We're running it with a VFD. VFD's all over the place here. Uh, go ahead. Yep, screws turning. And what it looks like in here, that greenish stuff is uh, grease. I lubed this. And uh, there you can see the cone, uh, the screw turning in there. Interrupted flight design. Go ahead and throw the handle on the regulator. Try turning it the other way. Hmm. Our test area is a disaster. We've got a couple filter machines here and uh, a shredder and we're feeding a bit of this material in and uh, there we go. It's feeding fairly well. So it's going into the screened area. Opening on the screen are 15 thousandths of an inch on the inside. Uh, in the earlier part of the video, you can see the inside. When we get enough stuff in there, it will push this cone open against the air pressure. I set the air pressure at two bar, um, sort of a moderate setting. It ought to work. Aha, uh -huh, we're already getting some stuff coming through the screen. And uh, it's not a flow of oil. Uh, these holes are for steam injection. If we wanted to heat the material up while we're doing this, uh, we could. And it's progressing through towards the air it comes out. And um, I was hoping to get a flow of oil to come through this screen. But as you can see, I'm just getting mud. The um, fiber, you can see fiber in there. I'm going to set the air pressure a lot higher. Okay, I reset it for five bar. You can see it's probably coming out a little thinner here. That air cylinder is pushing the door more shut in an effort to drive oil through the screen. Probably have something similar on this side of the screen. Here's the cake that we're getting out. It's falling down here already. Um, Yes, I'd hope to get a stream of oil. I'm filtering it. I am filtering the uh, bigger pieces out. And there's, you can see this is uh, so I'm getting a separation. I don't know if that'd be of any use to anybody. Before when we've done cuttings from frac drilling, we've had uh, an actual flow of oil come through at times. Here you can see at the inlet we're getting a wetter stuff and here at this end uh, we've got it a lot drier. We can put a conical bottom in this uh, screw press, doesn't have to have a flat pan. Uh, we're still getting cake out down here. We're running at 60 hertz, uh, get the most power that way, didn't want to trip out. But um, anyway, I think that shows what we can do. We could, we've already adjusted the air and didn't do anything. Uh, putting steam in might do some good, heat it up. Um, changing the screw configuration. I'm afraid we're going to end up doing the same thing. Going to a screen with tighter slots isn't going to change this material. The 
the particles that are coming through this screen are so fine that um, they would get through a, uh, this one's got 16 thousandths of an inch slot. If we went down to uh, 10 or even a little bit less, eventually they'd blind over, but uh, this is about what we're gonna get. So I don't see any silver bullet to separate oil from this material. Uh, a little bit of a plant tour. Uh, utter chaos here right now. Um, that is, we rent presses out. Most of these are presses that have been rented. Those are shredder, screens from a shredder, a variety of screw presses. These are just a little itty bitty ones. We've got bigger ones over in here. They're all from the rental fleet. And um, there's one getting uh, sandblasted, painted, primed, um, and going headed for the assembly department. Uh, over here we have the screw department. You see a bunch of screws. Uh, if you see any welding flashes, it's because guys are w making more screws over there. Yeah, we're on two shifts, 10 hours each, and uh, working Saturdays too, so things are piled up. We're saving uh, a couple of gallons of sample in case uh, something else happens to be done. Right now we're uh, feeding in sludge from a paper mill uh, in an effort to purge out and clean the press. And uh, now we're getting water out. And that water is coming from that paper mill sludge. Um, hoping it'll push all this, uh, this material out of the press, help clean it up for the next guy. Here's a vapor tight press. Sometimes we squeeze alcohol out. A uh, better example of a vapor tight press, I see one in back here, uh, Pyrex windows, uh, definitely vapor tight. These are all machines from the rental fleet. We have a unending supply of uh, gearboxes. We stock more mistakes, I mean motors, than uh, most motor distributors in the city of Tampa uh, because we're continuously running tests like this. There's a wedge wire screen for the um, same four inch press we were using. Here you can see the narrow slots on the inside of the outside. This screen in contrast has perforated metal on it. Fine holes there and reinforcing three eighths on the outside. So those are your screen options. Here's raw material. That is, we used to uh, plasma cut our own parts. Now the steel suppliers all have uh, under uh, have uh, water jet cutting, and so these would be parts that we've ordered for some production run. We buy flights and uh, make screws. This screw department. There are at least four or five guys here on the day shift. I only see one now. And um, here's more flights for screws and at the same time more uh, work in process, repair jobs. Um, there's a screw getting ready to go into a lathe back there. That is one of the biggest lathes in the state of Florida. We can turn a, a 40 inch screw. Here's our uh, Bullard horizontal boring mill. Um, we can put a small press on there and fix the alignment between the frame, the screw, and the screen uh, for small presses. Here's a press going together in the assembly department. This one's going to Germany for a pectin, a food ingredient. This one is going to Mexico for a, a citrus peel. Uh, this one I don't recognize yet. Uh, this one's a rental press. Another press. We've got some really big ones here. There's a 30 inch press back there. We got orders for two orders for four of those yesterday, over a million dollars. Um, yesterday. Another press in the assembly department, one getting ready, screen, another press being assembled, another press getting ready for assembly, and uh, although we're jammed up with. Stuff. It's um, 
making screens here. The screw press is getting ready. We've got the frames welded out. Now we cleaned out one area. Here's a discharge cone for a larger press. It'll have bronze bushings in there. Uh, machine shop, mostly lathes. Uh, a couple drills, very little milling. We try to avoid milling. Uh, that slow runs up the cost. So everything is turned into a cylindrical shape. Okay, we're back where uh, we're cleaning out this bread. And I see we got the paper mill sludge to go through. Still getting a bit of water out, but we got rid of most of this uh, oily stuff. Okay, just a minute. What we did to chase out the paper mill sludge is we fit in uh, rice holes. That's, uh, and here's some uh, cotton seed holes. Now those are good uh, press aids to make, say, apple uh, work, but they're also good for cleaning out a screw brush. Yep, there's the rice holes making their way through. Clean press, sort of. Last bit of video. This little pouring press has an extra long inlet hopper. Uh, it, you can see the screw down on the bottom. Uh, we did this one, I sold one like this for frack drilling because they had a shaker screen and the cuttings were coming off the shaker screen about a meter wide and going into a small press. Here we have our mother hen and her latest brood of chicks. Uh, four have survived, possum got one. And there's uh, one of the daddies, uh, Phoenix, Golden Phoenix uh, chickens. And uh, here's a lizard.